Good evening, Wednesday night, New Hope. How is everybody doing tonight? Thank you. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Um, good to see everyone tonight. And uh, welcome to Hope on the Hill. And we're looking forward to a uh, good Wednesday night Bible study tonight. Do want to remind you, though, that this coming Sunday... This coming Sunday, uh, uh, the 24th, we will be recognizing the... Talk. Oh, 
someone should try to keep a modem of decorum. That's probably not me, but somebody should. So this coming Sunday, we're going to meet here and do something. Uh, who knows what it'll look like, but you miss a day, you miss a lot. That's what happens. So you have to be here. Um, but this coming Sunday morning, if you're not here, you're going to miss communion. That's one thing you're going to miss, uh, both at the 930 service and the 11 o'clock service Sunday morning. Also, we will be recognizing uh, high school graduating seniors. So if you uh, are a graduating senior that will be here in one of those services or uh, you have one in your family that's planning to be here, uh, please let me know so we can be planning and expecting uh, expecting you and we'll be uh, recognizing you in the morning services. So we have that to look forward to. And then the following Sunday, the last Sunday of the month on the 31st, uh, we'll be having uh, a special time in the in the morning service to commission Brother Kelvin Gunnels to a new ministry, and you'll just have to be on the edge of your seat until the 31st to find out what that is going to be about and be here uh, for that experience. And then that Sunday night at, C at 6 p.m., we'll reintroduce Sunday night service with our uh, fifth Sunday singing. And so uh, that Sunday night, the 31st, fifth Sunday singing, uh, we invite you to be here for that. And if you would like to participate in that, uh, please let me know. Uh, perhaps your small group wants to sing or something, as I've heard rumors about already. So, uh, but if you want to sing or play an instrument, share a testimony, quotes from scripture, uh, whatever it may be that you would like to do to, to share with us during that time, we invite you to do that, so let me know, and I will get you on the schedule. But we always have a good time of uh, praise and testimony during our fifth Sunday singing. So uh, praise the Lord for that. All right, Brother Tony, lead a couple songs. Que bella cosa, no you're not us. Oh, that's not what he meant. Okay. Okay. Uh, I can I can do it. I don't I'm not I'm not wearing a blanket skirt. I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> can I do what? I'm singing the tongue. Yes, but it's a known tongue. Yes. Um all right. We'll sing. Uh take your songbook. Uh take three steps forward. Grab a songbook. There you go. Good. Yes. Three steps forward and three steps back. Uh Open your songbook, song number four zero. Song number four zero. Let's stand together. Our Baptist calisthenics. You can stand. Are you washed in the blood? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansions bright? 
and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Washed in the blood of the Lamb. All right, number 463. Number 463. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called a yonder, when the roll is called a yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share, when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, we left the house. Oh, let's all quietly. Oh, never mind. Let's all quietly open our Bibles. <laughs> to see, see you here on Wednesday night. I've been seeing me here on Wednesday night for the entire time. Um, but man, just uh, love, love, love you guys and. Um, yes, I am. Be awesome. Thank you. And uh, also, like, let's go. I can get my clicker. We are rusty in here tonight. The meal was awesome. Uh, on my desk, maybe? Hopefully. Be awesome. I think it may be in my office. So while we're getting all that done, it's okay if we don't have it. We can make it without it. Um, I would like to to um, show you where I just put my phone. Uh, did I give it to Scott? Did I put it in my pocket? 
I just had it in my hand. Hey, did I give you my phone? Did I hand you my phone? You took it. Well, don't. Yes, I do. Wow, yeah. Would like to like to thank everybody for being Facebook Live tonight and everywhere else. Yeah. So I would like to um, I'd like to sh- to remind everybody about uh, this picture that you all got. I know you can't see it from where you are. This picture that I'm sure that you all got, it's a picture of my father holding his cell phone, which he dropped in the lake two days before this picture, and then he fished it out of the lake, and it was still on. And uh, that's him with an unusual look on his face. It's a smile. <laughs> and, um, and this is actually an illustration. The illustration is, uh, I do not imagine you got that text. No, and I'm going to tell you why you didn't get the text. My wife got it because she's on a a group message called the old fam. That is O-L-E, the old fam. The old fam is a text message, a group message where we as a family communicate with one another. One of the things that makes the Christian life what it is is this ability and this constant communication we have with our Lord. And it doesn't matter. Look, whatever goes on in this life goes on in this life. And every one of us have experienced craziness, turmoil, and stuff upside down, and doubt, and questions, and good times, and bad times. But there's nothing like being on the old fam text message list where, hey, pray for me. I'm going through X. Hey, I'm stranded on the side of the road. Somebody come help me. The old fam. The reason that so many people think to themselves, you know, I'm a Christian, but but the Christian life has disappointed me. Like, are you in the family? Jesus told Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And this this relationship, and, 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 and we've been talking about this, the importance of the main things. And the one of the main things, the main thing in our life is this relationship with the Lord. And the way we one of the main ways that we keep this communication with the Lord is through prayer. His part is that His revelation to us, primarily through His Word, but in other ways too. But we have this constant communication with Him. I read this morning, I read the book of Ephesians and how that um, the Bible talks about in the first part of Ephesians, how that God from the before time, before our time started, that God predestined us to uh, the adoption of children. That God had a plan before time ever existed to know and experience life with you. And He made you and I, if you look at uh, chapter number 2, He made you and I to be trophies of His grace. We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. He goes on to tell us that we should be filled with the Spirit, speaking to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. We should be filled with Him. And when things go really bad, who do you think, if things in my life really turned upside down, who do you think I might text first? Who are going to call? Gonna call? Probably going to call somebody you already been through time with. Fact of the matter is, I'd either call the old fam or I'd call somebody my new hope fam. When things in my life really go bad, I'm glad that I'm in the family of God and that I can go directly to Him. 
He says, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves. You and I, we should just be filled with the presence of God in our life. That is, the, that is our objective from day to day. This is why prayer and God's Word and, and just the things of God are so important in our life. It should define our life. And then, of course, uh, in, uh, in chapter number 5, he says, oh, yeah, by the way, put on the armor of God. This is not going to always be easy. Put on the arm of God that you, may be, that you might be able to stand. He indicates to us, there are going to be some times when you're not going to know if you're going to be able to stand or not. You put on this arm of God and he'll prepare you to stand in the evil day. In that day when it's hard, when it's evil, it's difficult. I know me personally, I can think of several times when I have committed my life and difficulties of my life to prayer have a special kind of prayer and a special time of prayer that i'm not going to talk to you about but i've committed to do that until x prayer is answered i did that one time in fasting and prayer for over a year one day a week for over a year because i just believe that god just answers prayer have things that are on my prayer list that are not leaving that prayer list. They're going to get mentioned in my mouth, out of my mouth every week of my life, uh, almost every day of my life, till they are answered or I see the Lord face to face. And I'll probably mention them then. Now, you know, I've talked to people who were on their deathbed before. I don't think I've ever told this story because I've been with a lot of people when they've taken their last breaths. I've even been with people who who they were who they had a family member and nobody in the family could stay there. They just didn't feel like they could they could be there when they took their last breath and and I got I've I've been able to talk to people as they were leaving this life for for eternity. I've had a couple conversations with people I was like, "Hey, when you get to heaven, if you don't mind telling the Lord personally for me." <laughs> Asking him personally for me about this situation. I don't know how much I believe it. So I'm like, hey, uh, you know, I may even get there for you, but if I don't, if this is it, if you don't mind just kind of mentioning this to the Lord for me when you get there, if you're not just so overwhelmed by everything, when you think about it, don't you love the idea that when things go however they go? You can go for the Lord. I can't tell you how many times just in the middle of the night, I'm just like, that's it. I don't know how you handle difficulty and stress. Um, if you check the cameras enough, you may find me walking in here. How many times I've walked down 1972 in the middle of the night just to talk to the Lord. Sometimes just to pray for you. Maybe we were going through something together and I couldn't sleep anyway. Rachel would be like, where are you going? You know. <laughs> but isn't it awesome? Something about prayer. But, but I'm always struck when I talk to Christians and they're in a, the turmoil of their life, but not with the Lord. People who name the name of Christ, they're in the turmoil of their life. And you're like, you know, do you carry this to the Lord on a regular basis? Well, you know, Brother Tony, I mean, I am a Christian. I'm like, why are, we, why are we being dismissive about the one person who can help? The one person we're supposed to be, have that, that connection with that can help. This is what prayer is. This is what this, this time of prayer is. And the disciples who had walked with Christ so much, they had seen him pray. They had seen him talk to the Father to where, uh, not in this passage, but in another passage, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. We, we want to pray. We want to be able to pray. And there's something about effective prayer. There's something about feeling like when you pray, you, 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 have, you have been with the Lord. And so this is what we're talking about. This is... We're talking about the ability as a believer. And let me encourage you to make that, to, to have some goals in your Christian life. 
to say this is something that that if the Lord gives me time in my Christian life, that I'm going to I'm going to learn to do this in my Christian life. And that one I'm be, Lord, let me let me be close to you in prayer. Again, because our one purpose in this Christian life is to know and experience the Lord. Then everything that we do after that can flow out of that. But if we don't have that, um, I even heard somebody one time say our Christian life is not stronger than our prayer life is. It's just not because it shows, it reflects. And so that's one of the things one time that that really got me thinking about, about prayer. So uh, tonight we'll be in Matthew chapter number 6 and verse number 13. Uh, Matthew ch- uh, 6, here in this model prayer, this idea of... of um, Jesus teaching people to pray. It's one of those things that we have this uh, clear example of Jesus doing. And and it's always, I think, sad when people just kind of uh, recite the words. Um, but, um, and again, those those are, are great words, but not just out of ver- just doing them verbatim. Let's make sure we're thinking about what we're doing. So it kind of gives us a breakdown. Um, You can see the breakdown in this, um, in this, um, here, this model prayer. And we're using these prayer journals. If you have one, if you decided that, uh, that you wanted to to do that with us. And by the way, um, for me personally, it's been, been something that has been very good for me because I don't mind telling you uh, that prayer is one of the things that I've struggled with the most. I'm not a great communicator. Um, if you are a member of New York Baptist Church, that doesn't take you by surprise. Um, I'm not a great communicator. And especially when it comes to, um, you know, that's one of the things that Brother, Brother Scott and I have I've talked about. Brother Scott is a guy who enjoys the conversation. He enjoys conversation. You're more than welcome. Me? I can live my life without conversation. Um, this is enough conversation for me. Me and Brother Jim just had a complete conversation. That was fine. He's okay. I'm okay. <laughs> you know, uh, I just I don't, I, don't, I don't need a lot. I don't enjoy a lot. Um, <laughs> the Did Lake see Rachel and I walking down the road. Um, sometimes that is one of the ways that I make sure that I communicate with my wife. We do it different ways. We'll go somewhere. We'll uh, intentionally be somewhere together. That way I know that, that I'm, you know, I'm like on the karate kid, must stay focused. So that's why um, when I heard somebody early on in my, my Christian life talk about a prayer journal, that's why I, that's one of the ways that I do it. Um, one of the ways that I pray. I don't do it every day. I don't use my prayer journal every day. Um, I, I use it m- the, the majority of days, especially for certain names that I pray for and certain things that I pray for uh, because I just have so many uh, in there. This is not even mine. Uh, but Scott, will you go get me my prayer journal off my desk? I think I have it in there from today. Uh, but, but it really does help us. Notice what the Bible says here. Um, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name we see. This idea of, in our prayer, lifting up God and who God is. Um, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as as it is in heaven. So after we have this time of lifting up the Lord and we, we, we we, we just remember and praise him for who he is, um, and by the way, tonight, before we get started, let's, uh, why don't we do that? Why don't we pray together? Lord God, um, it's just, it's so easy just to kind of jump into things. Um, no doubt, Lord God, my tendency is to uh, just run ahead of you and try to do things on my own. Uh, Lord, I pray that um, tonight, Lord, that you would just give us uh, your leadership, Lord God, that you'd open our hearts and minds to that which you have for us. Lord God, that you would keep us ever mindful of um, of who you are, what you're doing in our world. Lord God, that you would keep us yielded to you. 
Lord, that you would um, expose to us that which you have for us and that which you want us to do. Lord God, that um, Lord, that you would just, uh, um, Lord, help us to be drawn in relationship to you and to what's uh, what you would have for us. And Lord, that we would be lights and that we would be more of what you want us to be so that we can be more effective in this world, Lord, because of our relationship with you. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be prayers. Lord, I pray that you'd help us and give us the desire to pray. Lord, that you would make us again, just conform us into your image. Transform us, Lord God, we ask in your precious name. Amen. So again, this um, this idea of when we pray, and then we're talking about focused, a focused and disciplined time of prayer. A time where we just set aside that time. Where this is this is the work of the Christian life. I don't think anybody would disagree that um, it's important to do that which God has called us to do. But we'll remember things like in first in John fifteen, 15 uh, John fifteen, where the Bible says, "Without Him, we can't do anything." Um, and so, to engage the Lord in prayer, to to get on His page, is what we're trying to do in this idea of prayer. We're not trying to get God on our page. So many times in prayer, we're trying to convince God or get God involved in what we're doing. Rather, we're trying to get on God's page. Lord, you show us, you teach us. So the first thing we do is focus on Him. Then thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Everything after that, uh, and the fact of the matter is, including that, is um, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. Um, and even that submitting to, Lord, if 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 it's if what I'm doing is not in your will, then let me know. And 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 show me that. So we talked about God's will. We talked about our daily needs. For those of you who've been watching online, um, and praying for our daily needs and that which we need uh, for God to make us what we need to be. A lot of what is in this this prayer journal as just a guide. And I didn't do a great job, you know, in, in, in making the prayer journals, but just kind of an outline. Um, but you know, things like Lord, I need wisdom and I need the right perspective and I need I need your power. Um, as I pray through these things in the morning, I'm I am reminded of who again who God is and who I am and and what I need in this life. Lord help me to, to see things correctly. Help me to respond to things. Lord help me to have the right temperament. Right? I have certain certain character flaws that are just in me and they are deep. Um Things like you know pride and and uh, being a smart aleck and and things that are just they're just quick to come out and so I pray for these things Lord help me to 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 already be mindful for these things when I when I go into my day uh, so for our daily needs um, for forgiveness that's one of these things on there uh, and again that's part of us getting on God's page. I am amazed, and we didn't, we haven't gotten to it yet, but how God gives His His presence and His principles. I'm amazed at how um, you know it's not just the Old Testament that are full, filled with laws, or principles, or precepts. Um, I read through Ephesians today, so you have yes, God came to save you by His grace, and then it's like, and by the way, right? Walk circumspectly. You you need to to live in a way that honors the Lord. And and I just got through reading First and Second Corinthians, and he's like, "Look, don't let this be named once among you as become saints." And and you're 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 and, and so this idea of being holy as He is holy. And so when I'm praying to the Lord, Lord, search me and know my heart, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any evil way in me, and help me to know what it looks like to be more like you and help me, Lord, to be what you've called me to be. And so uh, this idea of forgiveness, we talked about the intercession for others. And um, and tonight we're going to talk about protection, direction, and deliverance. Um, praying for those things. But the Bible says, uh, lead me not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Uh, this idea of, Lord, help me. Uh, I want you specifically to focus on this word, um, lead us. Lord, lead me. Um, for example, 
what we're going to do and how we're going to do what we do as far as transitioning and in, in during this time as far as a church and how to do that, man, that's that's been an incredible thing. Uh, we were talking about what has happened uh, since this has happened, and somebody was like, "How did you, how did you do everything that you did in the way that you did it?" And it just seemed to go so smooth. And and the the answer is, I don't have any idea really how all that happened. Um, it's it's when you look back and you're like, "Man, the Lord was leading the whole way." We were just praying, "Lord, lead us." And uh, remember how the Lord led in the wilderness, how the, when the cloud moved, they moved. And, and you want to be in that relationship with the Lord where, where you're making decisions and the Lord is leading those decisions. And a lot of times you don't even know the Lord's leading the decisions. But you want to be in that relationship to where he's leading. Um, so, so when you have that right heart and God puts those, uh, those opportunities in your path, and he 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 um, kind of kind of orders and orchestrates things. Um, I have I have for a long time struggled with this idea of leading, and um, this idea. Well, the Lord is leading me X. How many of you have ever seen a minister? We'll just use ministers for example. Have you ever, have ever seen a minister who has been led, who has said, the Lord is leading me. And that minister has been led to a place that was worse than the place he was at. That's not, that's not a rhetorical question. I would really like to know. Me either. And I don't think that's how God does it. That's problematic for me in my heart. <laughs> I heard of a, a little joke, tongue in cheek, one time. Uh, a minister got called by a bigger church, and he went and told his wife, um, "Such and such church called us to come in view of a call. I'm gonna go upstairs and pray about it." She said, "Well, I'm gonna come with you." He said, "No, you start packing." I laughed at it the first time I heard it too. And I thought to myself, that's not funny. There's way too much truth in that. How many of you ever read Pilgrim's Progress? Read Pilgrim's Progress? There's a story in there that Christian has. There's a, a conversation that Christian has. And, and I, I've read Pilgrim's Progress probably three times. I don't recall things very well. But Scott brought it up and, and reminded me of it here the other day about how Christian has this conversation with who, Brother Scott, about, about ministers making decisions um, that benefit themselves as well and whether or not that would be a sin. Who do you have the conversation with? I don't remember. Either. Anyway, the point is be very careful about saying God leads when it's not God leading. It does, however, need to be in our constant prayer. Lord, lead me. Even if it leads me to, if I know I'm going to Rome to end up in prison, even if I'm going to Jerusalem to be bound, Lord, lead me. Because I'm telling you guys, there's no place better to be in this life than where God wants you to be, which is with Him. If it's bound, if it's not bound, our prayer needs to be, Lord, lead me. And we have this idea as Christians, some reason in our mind, that if it's the Lord leading, then it's automatically going to be to this place that is more comfortable. That's easier. That's not always the case. I'm just saying we just need to let God be God and let God lead. Let God be God where we are. And just trust him to lead. We want him to lead, to protect, and to deliver. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So here are a couple examples. Psalms chapter 31 and verse number 3, the Bible says, For thou art my rock. Um, you, are my, you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, 
for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Luke chapter number 22, verse number 46 says, And said unto them, um, um, Why sleep ye? Now, remember he carried his, his, uh, his uh, disciples here to the Mount of Olives, and he says, Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Right? Pray, lest you enter into temptation. You need to pray that the Lord guides you so that you don't end up in a place where you don't need to be. And they had no idea where they were going and how things were going to end up. But the, the, what, what Jesus was trying to teach them here is, is, listen, you need to pray because you're going somewhere. I have this conversation with people all the time. Things will not always be like they are today. Talk to people this week, just don't want to live. Here's one thing as we got deeper into the conversation. Things will not always be and seem like they are and seem today. Okay? Don't ever make a decision in some kind of tumultuous situation. They're not always going to be like they are today. But pray that the Lord leads you to where you need to be because you don't know. You don't know how the situation is going to be. This morning I woke up Next to the lovely and talented Rachel Pierce. Had no idea what she's going to do tonight. But I woke up next to Rachel and we had a little short conversation, kissed her goodbye. I do not know that that'll be the case tomorrow, and neither does she. Lord, lead me to where I need to be. Lead me to where I need to go. I do not know what temptation, what will happen tomorrow, what I'll be introduced to tomorrow, Lord lead me. Um, Acts chapter number 14, verse number 23, and when they had ordained the elders in every church, they, they prayed and fasted, or and had prayed and fasted, they uh, commanded them, or commended them to the Lord. What did they say? They, 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 they prayed and fasted for these people to that the Lord would, would do in their life, that would lead them to where they need to be, order and orchestrate their lives as they needed to be ordered and orchestrated. First Samuel in the Old Testament, First Samuel chapter number five, verse number nineteen. You see this over and over and over in the Old Testament, where, for example, here David inquires of the Lord and says, "Shall I go up into the Philistines, and wilt thou deliver them into my hand?" And the Lord said unto David, "Go up, and I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand." And so you see these example after example after example of praying for direction, pray, praying for leadership, praying for for help. Um, to make decisions from day to day. You don't know that you're going to need the help till then. Don't wait till you're in the situation to try to make up your mind. It's what I used to tell the kids in, uh, when I was in the youth group. So it's too late when he acts like he ran out of gas on that old top road to decide what decision you're going to make. That decision has already been made. I'm not putting myself in that situation. For the Christian, it's the same way. Lord, lead me. I'm worried about, Lord, lead me today because I don't know what's happening the rest of my day. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's going to happen. Lord, I need your leadership. And so, real quickly tonight, here's just a couple um prayers of leading and the psalms i love to pray uh the psalms and 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 to get examples of prayer in the psalms let's look at a couple of those prayers of leading first of all um psalms 25 and verse number five um this idea of prayer uh to be led in truth to be led in the truth of god lord lead me to act and live and know the truth, to make decisions based on objective truths. One of the things I love about this life, I was telling somebody the other day, is like, what do you think about what's going on in the world? I said, it's just interesting to watch. I'm like, interesting is not the word I thought you was going to use. I'm like, well, for, for, for me, not much has changed because it's all about objective truth. Right? I already know that certain, certain things are just what they are. But objective truth, when you, when you just do what God tells you to do and, and you kind of know what, what God has said about whatever the situation is, whether it be 
your family or your work or whatever. Uh, what one of the things that that I love in life is peace. The peace that passes understanding is one of my favorite attributes of the Christian life. And one of the things that that one of the reasons that we have that is because not a lot moves around. There's not a lot of shaking and moving. It's pretty much just is what it is. I really love that about the Lord. It's like, here's what the truth is. Now, what you going to do? Listen to what the Bible says here in in, um, Psalm chapter 25 and verse number 5. Lead me in thy truth. This is this prayer. And teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Lord, just teach me what the truth is. This time has been a very difficult time for many couples. And I always tell couples when I talk to them, I say, you know what makes um, a basketball game fun? The two people in the gym who nobody likes. The two people with the whistles and the rules. That's what makes a game enjoyable. What makes life enjoyable is that there are objective truths that make everybody submit and say, oh, that's just what it is. Lord, help me to submit to your truth. If I want the Lord to lead my life, to direct my life, to preserve me, to keep me from temptation, then what I have to do is ask the Lord to lead me into his truth so that when I'm approached with a temptation, I had a girl one time get in my truck and said, hey, let's go somewhere. I said, that's a great idea. You go wherever you're going before you got in my truck. And then I'm going home. Ta-da! Right? Because why? I'm just going to go ahead and yield to the truth that I had before I ever saw you. Right? I don't know you from anybody. So this idea of when we default to the truth, my wife told me a situation the other day. She was in, she's like, hey, this was this is what happened, and this is what the this is what need to be done. And this is what happened. I was like, wow, that's awesome. Why? Because you don't have to really think about it when the, when you allow the Lord to lead you. All right? Lead us not in temptation. Rather, lead us to truth. I learned this one time. Uh, one of the last times I went grocery shopping with my wife. This has been years ago. <laughs> but they gave her too much money back for some cookies. I was almost home. And I had to go back to sleep with one so she'd get in that money back for them cookies. And I was like, it was like $2.50. I was like, at least do it later. No, right? I remember later. I just love the fact there's just some things of truth and look, this is what I got to do and this is what I'm going to do. And, and you know, um, the, 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 when we have these things in our life, how much simpler, how much easier does life just flow? Right? And so I, I, I love, and, and, and so many things that, that I love about my wife, when we first got married um, and, and I brought my check home, I was making $3.75 an hour. And she was tithing uh, 37 cents, 38 cents. She rounds it up. I was like, I already don't make much. And it has never been a question. I'd get a I'd get a Chris I'd get a birthday card with ten dollars in it, and she'd give me nine. I'd be like, that's my that's my birthday money. It's like what that is is increase. <laughs> okay, I just I just when when God leads you into His truth, man, then doesn't life just kind of flow? It is it's where you say, Lord, deliver me. And you're like, why did God allow me to get in this situation? Uh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what he wanted you to do during prayer time was say, Lord, lead me to, into your truth. And you submit to the truth. He didn't lead you. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't put you in that situation. He was trying to lead you the whole time in a different way. And you instead went this way. David, what are you doing on the roof of your house when kings ought to be in battle? See, David's fault was not murdering Uriah the Hittite. David's fault, he decided to stay at home. And that's that constant 
Lord, help me to help me to know your truth. Right? Um, AJ Clower told me uh, one of the coolest stories one time when I used to go get my hair cut down there, take two hours. And uh, this is one of the rare times I was in there by myself. And he said, I went to church with some people, Brother Tony. And he said there was a, there was some friends of theirs that uh, he went to Smyrna Methodist Church down here in between here and Harlton. And he said they had some friends that was always trying to get them to uh, go to the horse track with them. And he said they were faithful, sang in the choir, loved the Lord. He said they wouldn't do it because the horse races in Shreveport were all on Sunday. He said, they just were the sweetest couple you ever met. He said, finally, they decided they'd go one Sunday, but they weren't going to gamble. So they went to the horse track with them that Sunday, and he said, they, uh, the, the people said, look, we're not going to ask you to gamble, but we're going to buy a ticket for you, for each of you. And they spent $100 on, for both of them on a horse ticket. So it's like, well, I'm not spending any money. I'm betting the long shot. And it was a long shot. And they won, I don't remember what it was, it seemed like it was like $10,000 or something on a long shot horse ticket. And he said, but Tony, he said that one Sunday, he said it, about once a month they'd go. And every once in a while they'd take a vacation, they'd go Las Vegas or somewhere. And he said within two years they weren't even together. And here's what AJ said. I, I'll never forget it. He said, all of that for one horse ticket. <laughs> he said, that's what it took for the devil to get that foothold in. And for you and I, why do we pray? Why do we spend that time with the Lord? Why do we spend that fellowship time with the Lord? Because we use the word discipline. We talk about our prayer time, but it, it needs to move from discipline to fellowship. Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Lord, walk with me in my life and let teach me your truth and let me know your truth. What were the disciples doing while they walked with Jesus those three and a half years? They were just, just allowing him to pour in his truth into them. Here's another one. Um, number two, uh, prayer to be led in just right direction. In right direction. Teach me now thy way, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path because of thine enemies. There's a lot in um, there's a lot that I don't know. There's a lot that I did know and I don't know now. Right? Somebody the other day said, uh, do you know so and so and such and such? And I'm like, uh, I don't know if I did know it. I just know that I don't know it now. But there are some plain things, some directional things in our life that we need to know. That walking daily, main substance stuff with our Lord, those directional things, because losing our direction in our Christian life can cause us a load. I was talking to a guy the other day um, about direction. I said, if you uh, are headed to Longview and you go the wrong direction, you go toward Lone Star, you go 30 minutes out of the way, you didn't lose 30 minutes. So take 30 minutes to get there, but you went 30 minutes out of the way. You lost that 30 minutes. You lost the 30 minutes it take you to get back, and you lost another hour because you were already, th you're already an hour out of the way. You lost two hours because you went 30 minutes the wrong direction. And this is what's so frustrating oftentimes in life. When we lose direction, the direction is, Lord, just let me walk with you. Because if I get turned around, this is why I don't work on stuff at my own house. This is what I've learned. Because I work on it. I've got to pay for what I broke. Plus, I've got to pay somebody to fix what I broke. So I just jump right to it and get somebody to fix it for me. But for me, when we go... Out of the way, we lose way more than just that little bit of time that we lost. Lord, keep me in the right way. That way, Lord God, that is with you. Teach me thy way. Lord, help me to go with you. Psalms 143, verse number 10. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the path of, right, of uprightness. 
do you get this idea as we are praying before the Lord, Lord, lead me? We read, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. In our mind, if we go through it too fast, we're like, Lord, just don't let me do anything bad. Don't let anything bad happen. No, that's not it at all. Lord, lead me. Lord, there's stuff in, in this world that wants to take me away from you. Lead me not into temptation. Deliver me from the evil one. Because the evil one has a plan for me just like you do. Don't let me go the way of the evil one. Lead me not into that temptation. Lead me in a way that helps me to avoid temptation. You know, the Bible says with every temptation, he's made a way to escape. But often we think that means once the judge is about to drop the gavel, Lord, where's my way to escape? The way to escape was before the crime was committed. (laughs) I tell people all the time that the blessing of God is often in what you don't get, not in what you do get. You know how many times I've been down to Upshur County Jail and somebody said, I'd give anything not to be where I am today. I'm like, well, that was the blessing of God he wanted to give you. Not being here. Now, I didn't say that to them, but that's the thought process, right? Yes, that's the blessing God wanted to give you, is another place, another way. So this prayer of direction, this prayer of leading, the leading of direction, Um. This prayer of right purpose would help my purpose be you. Psalms 31, uh, 3, the Bible says, For thou art my rock and my fortress, therefore um, for thy name's sake lead me and guide me. What is the purpose? My purpose is Him. Lord, for your name's sake lead me. Lastly, um, we have this prayer for comfort and protection. I love this. Um, from the ends of the earth, I will cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And I will say this, the closer we are to the Lord, the less we'll find this being the case. That is our heart being overwhelmed. But when that is the case, there's this place of safety, comfort, and protection that is, Lord, lead me to the rock that is higher than me, that place where I can be sheltered, that place where I can stand. Now, here's what we want to do. If you have these prayer journals, I want you to be looking at them. What I want to do to end this study on prayer is I'd like to go through a night of prayer together. And I'd like to to pass out as many of you as would take one. We'll do this next week. For you to take just one. Um one topic, whether it be praise or forgiveness or intercession or whatever it might be, and just lead in a short time of prayer for those things. We're just going to pray together. Just stand where you are and and pray for for whatever that is. We'll end next week with um, how how we end here where the Bible says, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. This idea where we lift up thanks to God. That's how we end. We end with, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. And so um, we will uh, look at those. You'll have a week to look at it. But if you have a prayer journal, be looking through those different topics. And I want you to be praying and praying and praying and just practice that that because there's something to be said also, and we'll talk about it, something to be said about this congregational praying. We come before God and lift up who He is and ask Him for forgiveness and seek His, seek his will and, and uh, praise His name and ask Him for direction and and do and 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 ask him just to 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 rain down his spirit and presence on us and and make us effective for him. I says his house should be called a house of prayer. 
And we just really need to kind of learn to do that together. I'd like for us, to, you know, a couple times a year even, just to kind of just have some times where that's all we do is just pray. I love the Monday morning prayer um, with the guys where we meet in my office and pray. I think the women were doing that at, at one point as well. And, and Lord willing, when all this is over with, we get to go back to that and uh, they'll, uh, when they decide to do that. But th- it is prayer is so important. Our closeness and our relationship with the Lord is so, so important. Please engage in that closeness with the Lord, that fellowship with the Lord in prayer. There's probably no single thing you could do more important than teaching a class, more important than than leading a ministry, is being close to the Lord in prayer and in fellowship with Him. He desires it from us. He deserves it. I thank the Lord that He's willing to allow us to do it. Amen and amen. Anything before we go tonight? It's good to see your faces. Till we meet again. Oh, eat again. Yes, if you would like to eat, you can sign up. I got to eat with Brother Ed and Miss Pat. And uh, who else was sitting there with us? Uh, oh, and the uh, uh, bishops were there. And then um, Brother Gunnels ran me off. No, that's not what happened. I had a meeting. Uh, so anyway, yeah, it was, it was awesome to kind of, kind of get to do that. Um, and so, but anyway, if you would like to do that, uh, please sign up. And there's uh, plenty of room. If you want to spread out, you can do that. Um, so the Ritters, they take up their own table anyway. And so, but we love you guys. Be safe. Pray for one another. Um, encourage one another. Be encouraging. Uh, I know it's easy um, at this time to kind of be on edge. Um, you know, that's one of my defaults and tendencies is kind of be on edge. And um, But... You know, we will, we will uh, love, let love be the rule. And, um, and so we love you guys and appreciate you. Everybody watching my Facebook or on uh, uh, YouTube, we love you guys as well. And let's pray together. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Lord, help us just to, to love you more and draw, be just drawn closer and closer to you. Lord, teach us to pray. Um, Lord, just... Uh, I pray as, as, as we put forth the effort, Lord God, that uh, we know that on our own we're, we're, we're nothing, can do nothing. But, Lord God, that, um, that you make intercession for us. And, Lord God, that you're the, you're the great mediator. Um, and, uh, Lord, that you've given us that. And, Lord, that we need it. And I just pray, Lord God, that tonight that you would... Uh, lead and guide us, Lord, into this area of fellowship with you and communion with you and prayer with you. Make us effective prayers. Lord, um, just lead and guide us in everything we do for your honor and glory, uh, the honor and glory of your name, and your precious Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And amen.